الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My beloved brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, Thumma Alhamdulillah, praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we managed to finish the uh, entire Qur'an in this blessed month of Ramadan, Shahrul Qur'an, the month of the Qur'an in which the Qur'an came down. We finished the Qur'an in its entirety. We started from Surah Al-Fatiha and we took it to uh, up to Surah Al-Nas, which is the entire Qur'an. And we, uh, every day, we focused on one juz. Uh, and the idea and the reason behind uh, this was to show each and every one of you that it's possible that you can finish the Qur'an at least once uh, in the month of Ramadan. That if you designate an hour, maximum, okay, uh, the Qur'an every day, you can finish the Qur'an in the month of Ramadan at least once. And that's not what you should be aiming towards anyways. Your aim, inshallah ta'ala, as a Muslim who loves the Qur'an, who wants to benefit from this blessed month of Ramadan, you wouldn't want to finish the Qur'an once. You would want to finish it two or three or four times or five or even more. So what we did was the basic, the bare minimum that a person should do, which is at least finish the Qur'an once. And here, inshallah ta'ala, this session, after we finish the Qur'an, I want to shed light on the importance of this book, the Qur'an, the gems and the jewels that the scholars mention that are present in the Qur'an and how the Qur'an is a uh, forever living miracle. It's a mu'jizah. Um, it's an indication of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's infinite knowledge. This book is what compri- compress- comprises. It is what holds uh, our salvation Our prosperity is in this book It's in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The Quran If we're looking for success If we're looking for happiness If we're looking for joy We will find it in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala But sadly We all Including myself We look for it in other places And sometimes Those places are detrimental They're not for us It's not what we need It's not what our Minds and our bodies And our souls Requires, but we still give it. Like social media, like our phones, which is actually detrimental to our health, our mental health, uh, mental health our physical, um, our, our spiritual. It's affecting it in a very negative way. Rather than going to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that cures all of that. It cures our body, it will cure our hearts and our minds, and it will cure our soul. We, uh, we abandon it. And the Qur'an, my brothers and sisters, is the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ahsanu al-kalam, the best of speech. And the virtue of a speech is always determined on who says it. For example, if I talk, okay, and if a scholar talks, the, the difference would be very big. Scholar's speech will be higher. If uh, a scholar talks and a companion talks from the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. again the distance would be very high if a companion talks and the Prophet ﷺ talks the difference would be big if the Prophet talks and Allah talks the distance would, the, the speech would be different يعني meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is higher than his creation subhanahu wa ta'ala so the scholars they say فَضْلُ كَلَامِهِ عَلَى كَلَامِ الْخَلْقِ كَفَضْلِ الْخَالِقِ عَلَى الْمَخْلُوقِ The virtue of the speech of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala over the speech of the creation is the virtue of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over his creation. Allah is greater than his creation, right? So if Allah is greater than his creation, his speech is also going to be greater than the speech of the creation. So if this Qur'an is the speech of Allah, and that's what we believe, وَإِنْ أَحَدٌ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ Until he hears the speech of Allah تبارك وتعالى In another place Allah says يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يُبَدِّلُوا كَلَامَ اللَّهِ They want to change the speech of Allah So the Quran is the speech of Allah Allah's speech is not going to be like the speech of any 
ordinary person, right? It's the speech of the Khaliq. So why is it then, this is the question we should ask ourselves. Why is it then we are giving more importance to the speech of humans? Why is it that we're reading novels, fictions, and we're watching movies, we're watching comedians, we're on TikTok, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on these social media outlets, we're memorizing the speeches of rappers and singers and artists, we're learning phrases that football players have said, uh, we're memorizing uh, our celebrities and what they have said, but we don't want to give that importance to the Quran. Why is that so important to us? In the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now the, this is a question we need to ask ourselves. Something wrong with us now. And the Quran, my brothers and sisters, is so important and so great that even the previous prophets, they mentioned and spoke about this Quran. They told their nations about the Quran. They, yes, yes, my brothers. The previous prophets spoke to their nations, spoke to their people and pointed out the mention of this Quran. That's how important it is. Musa and Isa and all these prophets. Allah says in the Quran, وَإِنَّهُ لَفِي زُبُرِ الْأَوَّلِينَ Ibn Kathir rahimahullah, he said on the tafsir of this ayah, ذِكْرُ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ The mention of this Quran, وَالتَّنْوِيهُ بِهِ And alluding to it is مَوْجُودٌ فِي كُتُبِ الْأَوَّلِينَ It's in, it's present in the books of those who came early. يعني في كتب الأولين المأثورة من أنبيائهم <coughs> The mention of this Quran The mention of this book of ours Was mentioned by the previous prophets Did you know that my brothers and sisters? See this is uh, يعني, uh, Understood the virtue of it And the importance of it Was understood by the previous nations The previous prophets They knew that Why are we not understanding it? Allah actually praised himself subhanahu wa ta'ala that he sent this Qur'an down. He praised himself for it. That this is something very praiseworthy. Allah says in the Qur'an, Alhamdulillahi alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitaba wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaja. Praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who sent down the Qur'an on his slave, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallamah. In another place, Allah swore by the Qur'an because of its importance and the virtue and the position that the Qur'an occupies. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He says, Ya Seen, Allahu A'lamu bi muradihi. Allah knows what He means by Ya Seen. It's huruful muqatta'a. Only Allah knows what He means by it. Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Look what He says after that. Wal Qur'an al-Hakim. Allah swears by this Qur'an. The wow here is wow al-Qasam. And Allah is swearing, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Wal Qur'an al-Hakim. Actually, Allah went further in praising the Qur'an and speaking about it and its position and the place that it occupies. That Allah wa ta'ala mentioned that the Qur'an is very high. That it has al-ulu, that uh, highness, uh, intrinsic highness. And the position and the, uh, yani, pl- the, uh, the position and the honor of the Qur'an is high in and within itself in this book of Allah. Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala وَإِنَّهُ فِي أُمِّ الْكِتَابِ لَدَيْنَا لَعَلِيٌّ حَكِيمٌ Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala here وَإِنَّهُ The Qur'an فِي أُمِّ الْكِتَابِ لَدَيْنَا لَعَلِيٌّ حَكِيمٌ This Qur'an to us Allah is saying this is what? لَعَلِيٌّ It's high Hakim full of wisdom Now I ask you a question If this Qur'an is full of wisdom What is it going to give me? Wisdom If full of wisdom if I take this book, what is it going to give me? It's going to give me wisdom. If I then take the wisdom from the Quran, I'm going to be called a what? A wise man. If I, I repeat that, brothers. The Quran is full of wisdom. Okay? The Quran, this Quran that we have is full of what? It's full of wisdom. That's why a lot of places Allah refers to it as Hakim. I mentioned in Surah Yasin, Allah says, Yasin wal Quran il Hakim. And in this verse, Allah says, وَإِنَّهُ فِي أُمِّ الْكِتَابِ لَدَيْنَا لَعَلِيٌّ حَكِيمٌ So if the Qur'an is full of wisdom, I then take the wisdom from the Qur'an. What am I going to be known as? What am I going to be? I'm going to be a wise person. That's why, subhanAllah, some Muslims, they don't see that in the Qur'an. They don't understand that the Qur'an has that. 
So what do they do, my brothers and sisters? They read, for example, the art of war. And say they will say to you, Sun Tzu said, um, uh, this, this, this. And they'll quote him, memorizing it. Phrase, 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 phrase. Yeah, Akhi. You look, what are you looking for? Hikmah? Are you looking for wisdom? Are you looking for benefits? The Quran holds all of that. ولذلك Allah تبارك وتعالى He's telling us that He favored us. This nation, this Ummah. Allah favored them subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look what He says. Pay attention with me. The Quran is telling us what the Quran is. Allah says, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ Allah here subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ Allah has favored على المؤمنين Allah has bestowed favor upon the believers. How? When? If the time بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا The time Allah sent to them a messenger. مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ That messenger is from amongst them. What's he doing? What's this prophet? What's this messenger doing? يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ This messenger is reciting onto them. It's, he's reading onto them. He is uh, teaching them. What? آيَاتِهِ The verses of Allah Tabarak wa Taala. So the first thing that this prophet and messenger is doing is يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ He's educating them. Through what? What means? The Quran. وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ And he's doing tazkiyah. He's purifying them. وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ And the Quran, the verse is, mashallah, emphasizing on what? That what is it doing? وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ It's teaching them the Quran and it's also teaching them the sunnah. Hikmah here is the sunnah. Okay? So the Prophet came to us and he taught us what? He taught us the Quran and he taught us the sunnah. That's, that's one thing. So he's teaching us, educating us. And the second thing that he did for us, alayhi salatu wasalam, is that he is tazkiyah, purification. This ayah I just recited, my brothers and sisters, the beginning Allah says, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ I favored the believers. This is a favor that Allah did for you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. By giving you what? يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمْهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ this Quran is a favor. Why are we not seeing it as a favor? Throughout this lecture, inshallah ta'ala, that's what I want us to ask ourselves. Allah is talking about the Quran like this, and we are actually here. This is a question we need to ask ourselves. Actually, if you go to Surah Al-Rahman, that many of you, inshallah ta'ala, who are watching, are going to say, subhanAllah, I've memorized that surah, or at least I've memorized the beginning of it. Read it with me, brothers and sisters. Like, read this with me. What does Allah say? الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان Allah starts by saying الرحمن the most merciful what's the first favor he mentioned here Allah's going to mention a lot of favors he's done for us what was the first favor he mentioned علم القرآن Allah taught you the Quran then Allah says, خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ He created you. عَلَّمَهُ الْبَيَانِ Allah taught you how to speak and clarify what's inside you. Now pay attention here. Why did Allah choose to mention the virtue and the blessing of Qur'an first? Why did He say عَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ first? Why did He put that first? وَقَدَّمَهُ فِي الذِّكْرِ عَلَى كَثِيرٍ مِنْ نِعَمِهِ Allah put it first uh, in mention before all of the blessings he mentioned subhanahu wa ta'ala and you, you all know right suratul uh, suratul uh, suratul rahman what does he have in it fabi ayyi ala rabbikum atukadhiban it mentions it many times right the first blessing that was mentioned is allam al quran allah taught us the quran subhanahu wa ta'ala so my brothers we have to feel that the quran is a what it's a blessing from allah tabarak wa ta'ala wallahi brothers the Quran is an honor. It's this is where honor lies. If you go towards the Quran, you give it your time, you give it your life, you dedicate your life for this book. It is Azizun La Yujarihi fi Izzihi Shay. Wamandana minhu nalal izza. It's so honorable. 
And nothing is like it in honor. Nothing. Because it's the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyone who goes close to this book will gain that honor as well. This book is filled with honor. The closer you get, the more honor you get. How close are you? Is how much honor you have. Look what Allah says. وَإِنَّهُ لَكِتَابٌ عَزِيزٌ it's a kitab full of izzah, honor. And Allah wa ta'ala, he placed it in a high position. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَاكَ سَبْعًا مِنَ الْمَثَانِي وَالْقُرْآنَ الْعَظِيمِ Allah is talking to our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah is saying to him, why are you going to look at what the people have? Why are you going to look at what is in the people's hands, the worldly money they have, the monetary gain that they have, the power and the positions they occupy, the, the, the positions and the, why, why would you look at somebody's riding beast, the car that they have and the house that they have and the wife they have, how many children they have and whether they're leaders or not. Why would you look at them when you have what? وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَاكَ سَبْعًا مِنَ الْمَثَانِي When we have given you the seven verses that repeats itself. What seven verses, my brothers and sisters? Surah Al-Fatiha. You have Surah Al-Fatiha. You have better than anyone who has the entire world. And no one has the entire world. Wal-Quran al azim You have this book. You do not need to look at what is in other people's hands. لا تمدن عينك. Allah is saying, don't put your eye towards their direction, Muhammad. In another place, Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Qaf wal Quran al Majid. What does it mean, Majid? This Quran is full of so much honor. It is Majid un Kathiru al Makarim al Dunyawiya wal Ukhrawiya. In this book is so much honor. In this book, there's so much greatness, whether it be worldly greatness or hereafter greatness. Like, brothers and sisters, look, you can be a leader. You can be a leader if you want Of a country But when it comes to Salatul Taraweeh Or any prayer Who is it that's going to lead the people in the prayer? Who is the one that's going to stand in front of everybody else And lead them in the greatest action in Islam After the Shahadatain There is nothing greater than the Salah Actually Salah is a, a practical Okay a Manifestation of your Shahada after you say, Shadu la ilaha illallah, Shadu Muhammad Rasulullah, what proves your shahada is your salah. The greatest action after the shahadatain is a salah. Who is it that the one who leads the people in that prayer? And guess what? Who, who are we standing in front of? Allah Azza wa Jalla, right? We're all standing in front of Allah. We're all talking to Allah in our prayer. Who is it that's going to go in front of every one of us and say, Staw taqarabu wa atadilu? Straighten your lines. Who is it that's going to lead us in that prayer? Who is it that is going to recite for us this best speech that any human being can ever speak? The one who knows the Quran the most. Let the one who knows the most Quran lead the people. Have you just fathomed what I said, brothers and sisters? Have you thought about that? The leader, the richest person, the biggest businessman, he will go in the line like the rest of the people. The ruler will go in the line just like the rest of the people. And the salah will be led by the one who knows the Quran the most. Rather, my brothers, Allah will raise you stations and ranks through this book. Inna Allah yarfa'u bihadha al-Qur'ani aqwam. Allah raises nations and people through this Quran. وَيَضَعُ bihi akharin, And other people, Allah puts them down because they turned away from the Quran. They abandoned it. They left it. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا They abandoned the Qur'an, they left it, they turned their back on it. So what happened? Allah put them down. They were from rich families, they were businessmen. Allah abandoned them. I ask you guys a question. Please pay attention here and focus with me. Imam Al-Jazari, rahimahullah, one of the great scholars of the Qur'an, and Imam Ash-Shatibi, rahimahullah, one of the great scholars of the Qur'an, Abu Amr al-Dani, rahimahullah, one of the great scholars of the Qur'an. At their time, they were businessmen. At their time, they were rich people. Why don't we know them? 
Why do we know these great scholars of the Quran, but we don't know those businessmen? Because when those businessmen de- died, they also died with it. But we know these people because Allah raised them through the Quran. Allah raised them. Brothers, I want you to remember, these people whose names that we are remembering today, in the 21st century, there was no cameras. There was no uh, documentaries. But we know detailed matters related to their lives. We know when they got married, we know how many children they had, we know when they died, we know when they were born. We know great details of their life. And I can even say with conviction that at that time, there wasn't birth certificates. But their life is documented as though they were born under microscope. Why? Because of what they served. They served the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, me and you, we're just going to die as we came. Like nothing. Why? Because we've left the greatest thing that we should have turned towards. We have abandoned the greatest thing that we should have given our time and our life to. Allah wa ta'ala, he tells the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he says to him, وَإِنَّهُ لَذِكْرُ لَكَ وَلِقَوْمِكَ وَسَوْفَ تُسْأَلُونَ Muhammad, this Qur'an is an honor for you and your people. وَسَوْفَ تُسْأَلُونَ And you will be asked about this honor that was given to you. Think with me here. The Qur'an, Allah is saying to him, this Qur'an, Muhammad, وَإِنَّهُ لَذِكْرُ لَكَ It's an honor for you. And Allah is allowing you to earn honor and position through this Qur'an. So you're going to be asked about that the Day of Judgment. In another place, Allah says, وَلَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ كِتَابًا فِيهِ ذِكْرُكُمْ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ We have sent down unto you a book where there is in it your honor. Do you not have aql? أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ يعني, this, There's this road for you open. Why are you not going that direction? Why are you leaving that road? Do you not have aql? This book has your salvation. This book has every single thing. Why are you turning away from it? Why are you leaving it? Don't you have aql? Are you insane? Is there something wrong with you? This is a question we have to answer to ourselves. In another place, Allah wa ta'ala speaks to the Prophet. And I want this verse touches me every time I, I, I mention it and every time I read it. It touches me a lot. Allah says to the Prophet والسلام, and if this is being said to the Prophet, you and I, where are we then? Where are you and me then in the equation? Allah says, وَلَوْ شِئْنَا لَنَذْهَبَنَّ بِالَّذِي أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ وَلَوْ شِئْنَا لَنَذْهَبَنَّ بِالَّذِي أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ If we willed Muhammad, Allah is saying, subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we willed, if we wanted, وَلَوْ شِئْنَا we will take from you, Muhammad, what we sent down unto you. In the Quran, I repeat, Allah is saying to the Prophet, Allah is talking to Nabi Muhammad, but he's not the only one who's been addressed here. It's like the Arabs say, Nabi Muhammad here is being addressed, yes, but he's not the only one attend, uh, intended here. It's you and I. We are actually number one. The first ones that actually fall under this is me and you. So Allah here is saying, subhanahu wa ta'ala, walaw shi'na, if we willed Muhammad, what would we do? لَنَذْهَبَنَّ بِالَّذِي أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ If we willed, we wanted, we would take from you this revelation that we sent down onto you. The Qur'an. If we wanted, we would take it from you. ثُمَّ لَا تَجِدُ لَكَ بِهِ عَلَيْنَا وَكِيلَا and you would not find any individual, any person who can come and help you and aid you and support you. No one can do anything for you. No one can speak for you. No one can take this responsibility of giving you back what we just took from you. The greatest honor. This great book we've given you. No one can come and give it back to you. No one. Look what then Allah says. إِلَّا رَحْمَةً مِّن رَبِّكَ It is because of our mercy 
and it's because of our kindness okay and our generosity Allah is saying إِلَّا رَحْمَةً مِّن رَبِّكْ إِنَّ فَضْلَهُ كَانَ عَلَيْكَ كَبِيرًا It is because of our mercy and our kindness that we didn't do this to you. But then Allah says, but Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our virtue onto you, our virtue that, and the blessings that we have bestowed upon you are very great. Then Allah mentions, قُلْ لَإِنْ اجْتَمَعَتِ الْإِنسُ وَالْجِنُّ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتُوا بِمِثْلِ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لَا يَأْتُونَ بِمِثْلِهِ وَلَوْ كَانَ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ ظَهِرًا If the jinn and the ins come together, Allah is saying to the Bilal Muhammad, and they try to come with something like this Quran, they would never be able to come with the likes of this Quran. Never. Wallahi, never. However many years, millions of years, if human beings from the time of Adam alayhi salam until the last person, all of us came together. And the jinns from the first to the last of them, we all sat down and we tried to come with the likes of this Quran. لا يأتون بمثله ولو كان بعضهم لبعض ظهير الله says. However much we aid each other, we will not be able to come with the likes of this Quran. Wallahi, we won't. Why? Why can't we come with it? لأنه كلام الله is the speech of Allah. And we are makhluq created. The makhluq can never reach the level of the khaliq. This brook, brother, is mubarak. It's full of barakah. It's kathir al khayri wal manafi'ah. Look what Allah says. وَهَذَا كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ مُبَارَكٌ فَاتَّبِعُوهُ وَاتَّقُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ This book, Allah is saying, is a kitabun anzalnahu mubarak. It's a book we've sent down onto you which is full of barakah. فَاتَّقُوهُ Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have taqwa. وَاتَّقُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ And another verse that always touches me, Wallahi, this verse is also one of those verses that touches me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here says, and I'm also going to follow it up with the speech of a great Sahabi, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. May Allah bless him and preserve him and be pleased with him. Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, he says, هَذَا بَيَانٌ لِلنَّاسِ وَهُدًا وَمَوْعِضَةٌ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ This, يعني the Quran, in its wording and its meaning, it clarifies everything for us. هُوَ بَيَانٌ لِلْأُمُورِ عَلَىٰ حَقَائِقِهَا The Quran will tell you things as it is. We're living at a time today, my brothers and sisters. We're living at a time today, my beloved brothers and sisters, where we don't know what is right from what is wrong. Yes, Wallah. We don't know basic questions we can't answer today. If somebody was to say to you now, what is a woman? It varies in who, who you ask and what type of person you put that question to. صح? Yani things that were bedahi, known by necessity, every single individual knew. Kullu Bakrin wa Amr wa Zayd knew. Today it's, what do you mean by a woman? And what is it that's going to bring us back to understanding things as it really is? Ala haqiqatiha, in its real meaning, when things become messed up. If our time, these, things, these questions are being posed, Okay, and these questions are being put, and people are playing around with the meaning of these words. Okay, what do you think is going to happen after a hundred years when everybody becomes يعني, confused with these words and what it means? We need a book that doesn't change, that is still, that is solid, that clarifies to us everything as it is, it doesn't sugarcoat things to us in the sense where it doesn't go according to our whims and desires when it changes. It wants us to control our whims and desires in order to follow it. هذا بيان للناس وهدى وموعظة للمتقين. عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله تعالى عنه he said, بيّن لنا في هذا القرآن كل علم وكل شيء. In this book, Allah clarified to us. He said, كل علم in every knowledge وكل شيء in everything. That's what the verse means. He says, this Quran, my brothers and sisters. It's a, it's a book, nothing is like it. Nothing is like it. أَوَلَمْ يَكْفِهِمْ أَنَّا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ يُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ Here Allah is asking subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is it not sufficient for them that we have sent down alayka unto you الْكِتَابَ the book يُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ that is recited on them. 
Honey, there's nothing like this book. What else are they looking for? Why are you looking into philosophical arguments? Why are you looking into ilmul kalam? Why are you looking into all of these nonsense? When you have this book, and the people who are now today in the 21st century pushing, read Ibn Sina, Al Farabi, what he said. Read the kalam of these people haven't even given 1% of their life and time to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi 1%. And I stand by that statement. Kathirun minhum. They haven't even memorized the Quran. That's the first percent of the Quran. Memorizing it. أَوَلَمْ يَكْفِهِمْ أَنَّا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ يُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ Is this Quran not enough for you? You haven't even finished this Quran in terms of its wordings. You haven't memorized that. And then after that, if you finished one <laughs> version of the Quran, meaning if you finish one dialect, يعني, if you finish one of the riwayah, okay, you learn hafs, then go for Shu'bah, which is the student of Asim. And then finish that, and then go and carry on like that. Then go for the meaning. And understand it. If you go for the meaning, that's a lifetime uh, a mission. I mean, your whole life you're going to spend on trying to. Walidarika, a great scholar, Muhammad ibn Ibrahim ibn al Wazir al Yamani, a great scholar from Yemen. Who well, Imam Shawkani said he's a mujtahid al Mutlaq. He said in his kitab Badr al Talia, he said, he said about him that he's a mujtahid al Mutlaq. He's a mujtahid, unrestricted, that is at the level, pay attention to what he said, of the Aymat al Arba'ah. That's what he said. Shawkani, Muhammad ibn Ali, Shawkani, rahimahullah. Muhammad ibn Ibrahim ibn al-Wazir al-Yamani has a kitab called Tarjih Asalib al-Quran ala Asalib al-Yunan. In this book he mentions that the Quran passes and it's enough okay, for a person uh, to uh, and the Quran is enough in terms of adilla aqliya logical arguments. Lakin when you're ignorant you don't know the meaning of the Quran. You haven't really read the Quran. You haven't given it time. And all you can understand is the philosophical argument, the, the, the philosopher, what they said, and the, because it's in English for you, and that's the, the most accessible thing for you, then of course you're going to put this up and you're not going to really give much time to the Quran or you're going to condemn the people who push towards the Quran or you're going to look down at them or you're going to ridicule them. Why? Because wa ahlahu. the one who's ignorant of something, what does he do? If you're ignorant of something, you show animosity towards it. What do you do? Animosity. <laughs> There's this funny story that was mentioned. They said that a fox one day, a fox, said to his little child, come, let's get that uh, uh, the fruit from the tree. And uh, he tried, the fox went up, tried to get the f- um, But he couldn't get it. <laughs> uh, went up, tried, couldn't get it. So it looked at its child and it said to its child, Mom, let's go. Uh, it's not even a nice fruit anyways. It doesn't even taste anyway nice. It's a sour sweet, uh, or a sour fruit. In other words, when it couldn't get it and it couldn't achieve it, what did it show? Animosity. doesn't like it. Belittles it, ridicules it. This is the nature of the humans. أَتَانَا أَنَّ سَهْلًا دَمَّ جَهْلًا عُلُومًا لَيْسَ يَعْرِفُهُنَّ سَهْلٌ Allah tells us in the Quran that this Quran is the best of speech. Why would I give time to a speech of a human being? I have the best of speech. Allah nazzala ahsan al hadithi kitaban mutashabihan mathaniya taqa sha'irru minhu juludu ladina yakshawna rabbahum thumma talinu juluduhum wa quloobuhum ila dhikrillah. Ibn Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah rahimahullah يعني شيخ الإسلام he mentions in his مجموع الفتاوى I think it's the 17th volume page 11 he says رحمه الله تعالى فدل على أنه أحسن this ayah shows فدل على أنه أحسن من سائر الأحاديث المنزلة من عند الله وغير المنزلة actually this ayah shows that this that the Quran is greater than the uh, the ahadith that which has been sent down and that which hasn't even been sent down. It's better than all of the previous books. It is better than any speech of any human being. 
The Quran is greater. Allahu nazzala ahsan al-hadith. That is the Quran. Then he says what? Kitaban mutashabihan mathaniya taqsha'iru minhu julud al-lazina yakshawna rabbahum. I, as a Muslim, have the ability, and every one of you who are watching, to go to this book. Why? Limada? Why? Why? Would I turn towards the kalam of a Greek philosopher? Why would I give my time to his words? He's not a believer. He's not a Muslim. Why would I turn away from this? Who I have this book, which I haven't given it my life, and even if I did, I will still need more time because of the benefits and the gems and the jewels that are in it. Think about this, brothers and sisters. Let's think of what we say. Like, ponder on your speech. The Muslims that you're talking to haven't finished the Quran. The Muslims that you're talking to haven't finished the memorization of the Quran and the understanding of this Quran. And the knowledge that you're looking for. The great scholars, they mention how al Quran al Karimu min al Ulumi ajma'aha wa min al Ma'arifi anfa'aha fihi min al Ambiyai am fihi min Ambai asdakuha wa min al Barahini wa Dalairi avharuha wa min al Kisasi ahsanuha wa min al Hikami ablaguha wa min al Balagati wal Fasahati ajmaluha. This Quran it encompasses what? Min al Ulumi ajma'aha, the knowledge, anything I need. The sciences, the knowledge, everything I need, it's in this book. It has the stories of the previous nations. That we all know the famous statement, history repeats itself. So in order for me to know what the future will look like, humans' nature and their attitude doesn't generally change, right? So I just have to study what the previous nations were like and how Allah dealt with them, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I just need to warn my community and my people and myself from following that path of those criminals that were destroyed. It has eloquence. The Quran, my brothers, is opens the people's minds. The eloquence that's in the Quran. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he says in his Al-Jawab al-Sahih, لِمَنْ بَدَّلَ دِينَ الْمَسِيحِ He says in the fifth volume, page 433, he says, نَفْسُ نَظْمِ الْقُرْآنِ وَأُسْلُوبِهِ عَجِيبٌ بَدِيعٌ لَيْسَ مِنْ جِنْسِ أَسَارِبِ الْكَلَامِ الْمَعْرُوفَةِ وَلَمْ يَأْتِ أَحَدٌ بِنَذِيرِ هذا, الك... هذا الْأُسْلُوبِ فَإِنَّهُ لَيْسَ مِنْ جِنْسِ الشِّعْرِ وَلَا الرَّجَزِ وَلَا الْخَطَابَةِ وَلَا الرَّسَائِلِ وَلَا نَظْمُهُ نَظْمُ شَيْءٍ مِنْ كَلَامِ النَّاسِ عَرَبِهِمْ وَعَجَمِهِمْ The Quran, the way it's structured. The way it's put together. Nadm al-Quran. Uslubihi is what? Ajibun badia. It is fascinating. When you look at how Allah connected this verse with this verse. And you even look at the surah. Okay. Al-Biqa'i rahimahullah. He has a kitab called Nadm al-Durar al-Quran. Ama Nadm al-Durar. Fi tanasib al-ayati wa surah. I think it's called in its full version. He mentions... The way that the verses and the surahs are connected. يعني نظم القرآن وأسلوب عجيب بديع. This كلام في ابن تيمية. If you want to look at how it, look at بقاعي كتاب. ليس من جنس أسول أساليب الكلام المعروفة. It's not like the speech of a human being. It's not like the speech of the things that you're aware of. Look, brothers and sisters, if you go and you grow up in a neighborhood and an area or a household or a community or educated people, very well-learned people, they speak the high level of English language. How is your language going to be? Your language is going to be very high. Why? Because you're in that kind of environment where they use very sophisticated terms. So you're going to use those sophisticated terms, aren't you? But if you're not at that level or you're not in that type of circle and you're from a certain neighborhood or area, your language becomes like that. The same, my brothers and sisters, exactly the same. If you spend your time in reading the Quran, if you spend your time looking and pondering on the usage of the terminologies and the usage of these words and the order of the Quran, what are you going to come out with, my brothers and sisters? You're going to start to manifest in your speech 
the Quran in your normal day-to-day conversations. Look what Ibn Taymiyyah, look, this is the example of when the scholars immerse themselves in the Quran, they even start talking like the Quran. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he said, إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ إِظْهَارَ دِينِهِ أَقَامَ مَنْ يُعَارِضْهُ فَيُحِقَّ الْحَقَّ بِكَلِمَاتِهِ ثُمَّ يَقْضَفْ بِالْحَقِّ عَلَى الْبَاطِلِ فَيَدْمَغُهُ فَإِذَا هُوَ زَاهِقٍ Ibn Taymiyyah, he said, if Allah wants to, this is the speech of a human being. But look what he did, iqtibas, as it's known in Balagha. Because Ibn Taymiyyah has spent his life, dedicated his life for this book, the Quran and the Sunnah. And he was very knowledgeable in the Quran, Ibn Taymiyyah. What did he say? If Allah wants, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to put his Quran and his religion up, what does he do? Aqama man yu'aridhu, man yu'aridhu Allah being somebody who opposes it. So sometimes enemies of Islam are doing good towards the religion by bringing their corruption. So what happens? Someone who's knowledgeable, grounded, understands the deen, will stand up, defend the deen, and so much Muslim, so many people will come into Islam who would not have wanted to know about Islam. But look how he said it. He actually, Ibn Taymiyyah, when he said this, he actually copied, which is known in Balagha as Iqtibas. He borrowed, he took a verse of the Quran and emerged it into his words and it's his own speech but it's in the form of the Quran. That's Quran. But because he's so why am I why am I mentioning this example? Why am I mentioning what Ibn Taymiyyah has said? The reason I'm mentioning it is that when you spend your time in the Quran and you talk and you converse with people and you're in other in the Arabic language, you start to become so quickly connected to the Quran and your speech becomes like that. As a story, uh, Muhammad al-Amin al-Shanqiti, rahimahullah, uh, a man, Muhammad al-Amin al-Shanqiti, the great scholar of the Quran, he, Muhammad al-Amin al-Shanqiti, as you know, he has the kitab Adwa al-Bayan fi Idhah al-Qur'ani bil-Quran. So this story, Muhammad al-Amin al-Shanqiti, is a turfa. It's a, it's, a, it's a good, funny story. But it just shows you, subhanAllah, the power of his knowledge of the Qur'an. Muhammad al-Amin Shaqiti was of a high caliber when it came to the, the Arabic language, rahimahullah, and, and the Qur'an. His kitab, Adha'u al-Bayan fi Adha'u al-Qur'ani bil-Qur'an, and his kitab, Adhu al-Namir, a, a, a Muslim, a person who wants to love, has the love of the Qur'an in their heart and mind would, would really read that book. It's a very beneficial book. It's one of the great books of tafsir. Uh, and there are other books, but it's also one of the great books of tafsir of the Qur'an. So one time, Muhammad Amin al-Shaqir was lying down and then a man served him food. And he said to him, فَذُوقُوا فَلَنَّ نَزِيدَكُمْ إِلَّا عَذَابًا يعني فَذُوقُوا Taste this food. يعني, we will not increase you except in punishment. He was lying down. He got up. Look at the knowledge of the Qur'an. He used the verse of the Qur'an at him. He got up and then he recited the verse, Muhammad Amin al-Shaqir رَبَّنَا مَنْ قَدَّمَ لَنَا هَذَا فَزِدْهُ عَذَابًا Oh Allah, the one who brought us this food, increase him in punishment. يعني <laughs> ayah for ayah, the point, I mean. So why am I mentioning this story? The reason I'm mentioning this story is because the person, when they learn the Qur'an, is on the tip of their tongue. And their speech becomes like that. And their manners and their attitude changes because of the knowledge and the information that they're learning. They learn how the Quran talks. They know the, the things that the Quran doesn't do. It changes everything. And the more you look at the Quran, brothers and sisters, the more you realize this kalam of Ibn Taymiyyah, which is ليس من جنس أساليب الكلام المعروفة ولم يأتي أحد بالنظير هذا الأسلوب فإنه ليس من جنس الشعر ولا الرجز ولا الخطابة ولا الرسائل ولا نظمه نظم شيء من كلام الناس عربه معجمين. You look at the speech of any individual. Whether it be an Arab, a non-Arab, the most eloquent of people, Wallahi, the Quran surpasses it by many, 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 many distance. So that's why I say, brothers, why am I going to read the kalam of a human being and put it up on that high level? Unless that person is explaining the Quran for me, is explaining the Sunnah for me, is explaining something for me. Yes, I will take, I will give time because he's explaining something to me. But this Quran should never be put on the level of any speech. Whatever that speech may be. And the miracle of the Quran, my brothers and sisters, is what? Miracle in terms of its meaning. Okay? More than it is in terms of its wording. The Quran is miracle in its wording. 
but the miracle in its meaning is far greater and more than the miracle in its wording. Ibn Taymiyyah, he says, Al-i'jazu fi ma'nahu a'zamu bi kathirin min al-i'jazu fi lafthihi. And he says, wa qawlihi ta'ala, and the speech of Allah, qulla in ijtama'at al-insu wal jinnu ala an yatu bi mithli hadha al-Qur'ani, la yatuna bi mithlihi wa law kana ba'dhuhum li ba'dhin zahira. He says, thalika, this, all of this, yani kulluh, uh, kullihi, ay lafuhu huwa ma'na, in terms of its wording and in terms of its meaning. Okay, my brothers and sisters, we have to understand this and internalize this. It's very important. So don't just think to yourself that the, the ijaz is in terms of its wording. So you keep counting this ayah says this and what. There's ijaz in its meaning. Point I want to mention now, inshallah ta'ala, is what is the wisdom in why the Quran was sent down? Because a lot of us have mushafs on shelves. And in some countries when you go, you find that the taxi driver has a mushaf on uh, the dashboard. And when you ask him what is it for, he'll tell you, I swear on it. When, 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 my, when my passengers come and they don't want to give me my money and something, I just put my hand on it. That's what it's there for. Or it's a decoration. Ajeeb. Some of us just stick on the walls. And we are not... Uh, memorizing that which is even stuck on the wall. Ayatul Kursi is stuck on the wall. If you ask the family members, do you know Ayatul Kursi? No. Do you know it? No. Do you know it? No. Do you know it? Read it. Try it. If they even try it, have to attempt to try to read it, it's all wrong. So what's the reason why the Quran was sent down? For, so, we, so we can stick it on the walls? So we can swear by it when we need to? Like pick the Mus'haf dust. The only time you pick it and you clean the dust off it and you put your hand on it, you swear by it. Is that why it was sent down? My brothers and sisters, the hikmah in why the Qur'an was sent down is what? Is maw'idhatan wa shifa'an wa rahmah From its wisdom Is that it's a reminder It's a cure, it's a mercy for us As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says Ya ayyuhal nas, qad ja'atkum maw'idhatun min rabbikum Wa shifa'un lima fi suduri wa hudan Wa rahmatun lil mu'minin It's a, a reminder, it's a maw'idhah it's a cure. It's a mercy. Lima fi suduri for the chests. Wahudan rahma. It's guidance. We're meant to look for guidance in this book. That's what Allah said in another verse. Qul in dalaltu fa inna ma adillu ala nafsi wa in ihtadaytu fa bima yuhi ilayya rabbi. It's a light. It's meant to show us the path. Qad ja'akum min Allahi nur. It's where we should be taking our akhlaq and our manners from. When Sa'ad ibn Hishamin, rahimahullah, he came to our mother Aisha and he said, Ya Ummil Mu'minina, the mother of the believers. He said, Anbi'ini an khuluqi Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tell me about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's manners and his etiquettes. Qalat, she said to him, Alasta taqra'u al-Qur'ana? Do you not read the Qur'an? Qultu bala. He said, of course I do. قالت شي سيد فإن خلق أن فإن خلق النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فإن خلق نبي الله فإن خلق نبي الله عز وجل كان القرآن ووزع القرآن فإن خلق نبي الله the manners and the etiquettes of our beloved prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was what the Quran Imam Muslim narrates this in his Kitab al-Salah يعني صلاة المسافرين وقصرها باب جامع الصلاة الليل ومن نام عنه أو مرضا He mentions it there This Quran should be our source of happiness It's where we should find happiness when we read it, we enjoy it والذين آتيناهم الكتاب يفرحون بما أنزل إليك والذين آتيناهم الكتاب ابن كثير he said he said وهم قائمون بمقتضه is those who stand up in what this Quran means يَفْرَحُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ He said, أَيْ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ They are happy with this Qur'an. يعني the people that had the kitab before, وَالَّذِينَ آتَيْنَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ Those we gave the book to, يعني أهل الكتاب. They are happy when they embrace Islam. They're happy with what is written in this Qur'an. Why? لِمَا فِي كُتُبِهِمْ مِنَ الشَّوَاهِدِ عَلَى صِدْقِهِ وَالْبِشَارَةِ بِهِ They look at it, what's written in this book, the Qur'an, and they love it, they enjoy it because it goes uh, and it affirms what was some of the things that which was written in their books. 
Allah even told us subhanahu wa ta'ala قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُ Ibn Kathir رَحِمُ اللَّهِ mentions in his tafsir اَيْ بِهَذَا الَّذِي جَاءَهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنَ الْهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ فَلْيَفْرَحُ فَإِنَّهُ أَوْلَى مَا يَفْرَحُونَ بِهِ هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ He said اَيْ مِنْ حُطَامِ الدُّنْيَا وَمَا فِيهَا مِنَ الزَّهْرَةِ الْفَانِيَةِ الذَّاهِبَةِ لَا مَحَالَ In the most happiest person, my brothers and sisters, أَسْعَدُ النَّاسِ مَنْ قَرُوبًا مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ The most happiest person is the one who goes close to this book. Because it's light. قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ نُور This light is going to, inshallah ta'ala, benefit them in this world and it's also going to benefit them in the hereafter. And that's why I say, my brothers and sisters, we should enjoy this book. We should find happiness in it. The moment I spent uh, reading this Quran, or the moment I read, sorry, the Quran, and I recite the Quran, it's the most happiest moments for me. I enjoy it so much. It's like everything else fizzes away. And this Quran, it brings us that tumanina, sakina, and al waqar, sakina to al waqar. It brings that to our hearts and our minds. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith and Imam Muslim narrated in his sahih وَمَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمُ فِي بَيْتِ مِن بُيُوتِ اللَّهِ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَيَتَدَارَسُونَهُ بَيْنَهُمْ إِلَّا نَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّكِينَةُ وَغَشِيَتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةُ وَحَفَّتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَهُ The Prophet told us وَمَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ There is not a people who come together in a house from the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are they doing? يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ They're reciting the book of Allah. وَيَتَدَارَسُونَهُ بَيْنَهُمْ And they're studying it. They're learning. It's tafsir, fiqh, benefits that are taken from the Quran. And knowledge. They're taking knowledge from the Quran. إِلَّا نَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّكِينَةِ Tranquility will descend on them. وَغَشِيَتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ Allah Taala's mercy will cover them. وَحَفَّتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ And the angels will circulate them. And be around them. Revolving around them. Rotating around them. وَذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَ and Allah will mention you. Today, people love it on social media when one person tags you or when somebody mentions you or when somebody, uh, what's it called, shout out, when you get, someone gives you a shout out. You love it. People love it. Oh, that person, I like him. Why do you like him? He can't tell you just because that person tagged you. Actually, people become very happy when somebody follows you or somebody, uh, you like it. This person's good, mashallah. He follows me. On social media, honey. What do you then think if Allah mentions you? Where is he mentioning you? Uh, in the presence of the angels and the righteous people. Allah is going to mention you in the presence of the angels, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who are the angels? They are obedient creation of Allah. لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون يسبحون الليل والنهار لا يفطرون Angels do not disobey Allah. They do as they are told what Allah wants from them, subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, khayru jalis, the best sit for a person, khayru jalis lil mar'i hum ahlul Qur'an. The best people to be around in their gatherings and their circles to be around is the people of the Qur'an. Always bring them around you. Appreciate their presence with you. Don't ridicule the people of the Quran. Don't put them down. They are the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِذَلِكَ Umar ibn Khattab used to bring those people close. Abdullah ibn Abbas رضي الله تعالى عنهما, he said, كَانَ الْقُرَّاءُ أَصْحَابَ مَجَالِسَ عُمَرَ وَمُشَاوَرَتِهِ كُهُولًا كَانُوا أَوْ شُبَّانًا Didn't matter. Bukhari narrates in Sahih. كَانَ الْقُرَّاءُ The people of the Quran were what? أَصْحَابُ مَجَالِسَ عُمَرَ وَمُشَاوَرَتِهِ they were the people who used to come to his sittings and his gatherings. They were his uh, MPs, member of parliament. They were the people of the Quran. Whether they were up in age or young, it didn't matter. The people of the Quran are raised. Even if they're shab, youth. The people of the Quran who know its meaning are the people of knowledge. Not just memorize its wordings. When you hear this term al qurra it means those who memorize the Quran and know its meaning, inshaAllah ta'ala. As Allah ta'ala said in the Quran, Bal hu ayatun bayinatun fi sudur illadina utul ilma. 
Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he says, even if they didn't memorize the Qur'an, okay, but they know the meaning of the Qur'an, they are al-Qurra. بَلْ هُوَ آيَاتٌ بَيِّنَاتٌ فِي صُدُورِ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ Anyone who has the meaning of the Qur'an, memorized the meaning, understood the Qur'an, they are from the people of knowledge. Wallahi, if you turn to this Qur'an, my brothers and sisters, with sincerity, Allah will raise you. Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَرْفَعُ بِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ أَقْوَامًا وَيَضَعُ بِهِ آخَرِينَ And Imam Muslim narrated this in his Sahih. Allah raised a people through this Qur'an. Allah will raise you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, through this Qur'an. My brothers and sisters, this is the advice I wanted to give you all. Now we've understood the virtue the position, the weight that the Qur'an has. Some, inshallah, can mention everything. Now I want to mention the virtue of learning the Qur'an. Brothers and sisters, Allah is the one who taught the slaves the Qur'an. He made it very easy for us. Reciting it and memorizing it. I mentioned the verse in Surah Al-Rahman. Al-Rahman allama al-Qur'an. Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, he said, أنزل الله على عباده القرآن ويسر حفظه وفهمه على من الرحمة. In my tafsir Ibn Kathir, I underline that verse, I underline that word of Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir, he said, أنزل الله على عباده القرآن. Allah sent down on his slaves the Qur'an. Allah made the memorization of the Qur'an very easy. And its understanding, Allah made it easy. Who lacking for? The one who Allah has rahma on. It's a sign of Allah's rahma on a person when he gives them the memorization of the Qur'an. So who is it that reads the Qur'an and memorizes the Qur'an? Is it the Arabs only? Mm-mm. It is Al-Arabi Wal-Ajami. It's Al-Arabi Wal-Ajami Wal-Sagheer Wal-Kabir Wal-Dhakar Wal-Untha Wal-Ghani Wal-Faqir. It doesn't matter. Walidhalika Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail. Both of them made dua. Both of those prophets, they both made dua what? That Allah sends down. Because I already told you before, the previous prophets, they, they knew about this Qur'an. They mentioned it to the people. They pointed it out. Okay? They pointed this Quran to this to the book. They pointed to it. I mentioned that. So Ibrahim made dua now. And Ismail also made dua. Allah sent down a prophet that is going to read on these people this Quran. That is going to educate them with this Quran. Rabbana wabat fihim rasulam minhum. يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِكَ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ Oh Allah, send down, oh, send to them, okay? رَسُولًا أَيْ مَسِنْجَرَ مِنْهُمْ from amongst them. What would he do? يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِكَ Who recites on them the what? The Qur'an. وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ And teaches them the Qur'an and the Sunnah. وَلِذَلِكَ That's why the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the hadith Ana da'watu Abi Ibrahim. I am the dua of my father Ibrahim. He means this dua. Rabbana wab'ath fihim rasoolan minhum yatlu alayhim ayatika wa yu'allimuhum al-kitab wal-hikmah. Wallahi, there is nobody. And we belittle this. Or we don't, maybe we don't belittle it, but we don't give it much weight. We disregard it. We overlook it. The people who teach the Qur'an. You come into a masjid and you see a teacher who's teaching the Qur'an, making the people memorize the Qur'an. And then we say, oh, he's just a Qur'an teacher. What else does he do? Ya akhi, do you know what he's teaching the people? He's teaching them the best thing. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said in the hadith, khayrukum man ta'allama al-Qur'an wa'allama. The best. Khayrukum here, brothers and sisters, is yani akhyar. The Hamza B was dropped because of Kathratu Takrar. The word Khair, whenever you see it, it's what? Superlative. The best from amongst you is what? 
من تعلم القرآن وعلم the one who learns the Quran and teaches it that's the best person ولذلك the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he mentioned that learning the Quran is better than what the wealth of this dunya أي نعم and Imam Muslim narrated in his Sahih أفلا يغدو أحدكم إلى المسجد فيعلم يعني فيعلم هي أي means أي يتعلم why doesn't one of you go in the morning to the masjid and learn? Or يقرأ آيتين من كتاب الله خير له من ناقتين وثلاث خير له من ثلاث وأربع خير له من أربع ومن أعدادهن من الإبل The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام here he said Why doesn't one of you go to the masjid? يتعلم, learns أو يقرأ آيتين من كتاب الله أو he reads يعني two verses from the book of Allah and he goes to the masjid and reads two verses from the Quran that is better than him for two naqa two camels she camels and three verses is better for you than three she camels وأربعون and four is better for you than what four camels ومن أعدادهن من الإبل and and the camel was very valuable يعني تعلم القرآن خير من أموال الدنيا Learning the Quran is better for you what brothers and sisters than the world's wealth that you have ولذلك brothers and sisters our pious predecessors the Salaf al-Salih they made sure that they taught their children the Quran and the reason why they did that was ترسيق الإيمان في قلوبهم they wanted to really plant and deeply root the what? Iman in people's hearts أي نعم ولذلك one of the ways to increase your iman is to read the Quran is to memorize the Quran right so if you give your child this he's already ahead of everyone else or he's ahead of his age and his peers Ibn Khaldun rahimahullah he says تعليم الولدان للقرآن شعار الدين أخذ به أهل الملة ودرجوا عليه في جميع أمصارهم لما يسبق فيه إلى القلوب من رسوخ الإيمان وعقائده من آيات القرآن وبعض متون الأحاديث وصار القرآن أصل التعليم سد الذي ينبني عليه ما يحصل بعد من الملكات انتهى كلامه رحمه الله that the salaf what would they do تعليم الولدان للقرآن teach the kids Quran because it's a shi'ar al-din it's a symbol of the religion he said, أخذ به أهل الملة The people of the religion, this is what they took. ودرجوا عليه في جميع أمصارهم Everywhere you go, they treaded this path of teaching the Quran. Wherever you go, you went to Sham, you went to Hijaz, you went Najd, you went to Lifriqiya, uh, you went to uh, Andalus, wherever you went. You went Iraq, Kufa, Basra, Baghdad, anywhere you went. جميع الأمصار ودرجوا عليه في جميع أمصارهم and they put that before متون الأحاديث even حديث any Islamic science they put this before it my brothers and sisters we have to understand this ولذلك a powerful kalam I want to inshallah read on you guys of showing you how the Salaf understood فضل تعلم القرآن the virtue of learning the Quran it was mentioned that Abu Bakr Ahmed al-Shadai al-Shadai uh, he stuck with Abu Bakr Ahmed al-Shadai he stuck with his teacher in a journey do you know how the distance it was it was 847 kilometers distance. يعني من بغداد إلى دمشق. Why did he do that? So he can read the Quran and his teacher. He mentions, and you can find this in the Kitab Jamal al Qurra wa Kamal al Iqra, page 543. He said, قرأت ببغداد على أبي الحسن ابن الأخرم إلى سورة التوبة. He said, I read. Uh, in Baghdad, ala Abil Hassan ibn al-Akhram, ila surat al-Tawbah, up to surat al-Tawbah. 
ثم خرج فخرجت معه then he went out okay from Baghdad okay and I went with him فكنت أقرأ عليه في الطريق I was reading on him on the road إلى أن ختمت عليه بدمشق إلى أن ختمت عليه بدمشق until I completed the Quran on him when we reached Dimashq. Finished it. They were taking their pauses. They were, he was reading the entirety of the Quran. And of course, he was doing it with his different uh, yani, uh, modes of recitation and all of that. The virtue that we will get if we read this book is so immense, brothers. Man qara'a harfun min kitab فله به حسنة والحسنة بعشر أمثالها لا أقول ألف لا ميم حرف ولكن ألف حرف ولا من حرف وميم حرف حديث الإمام تلمذي نريته في الجامع anyone who recites حرف من كتاب الله حرف from the book of Allah تبارك وتعالى فله به حسنة you're gonna get reward for it what's the reward والحسنة بعشر أمثالها it's multiplied by ten لا أقول ألف لا ميم حرف and I will not say to you the prophet said ألف لا ميم is one حرف no each one separate alif is a harf lam is a harf mim is a harf each one 10 10 10 and reading the quran my brothers and sisters is one of the ways that actually make you firm some muslims are living in the lands of the non muslims if you are not connected to the quran you're going to lose athabat wal istiqama oh allah you're going to lose athabat wal istiqama Steadfastness, one of the means to attain steadfastness is to stick to the Quran. And it always amazes me, may Allah bless and preserve. When I was in uh, the UK, uh, many years, I've known a group of young brothers, may Allah bless them and preserve them, who have been sticking to the masjid for finishing the Quran. These young brothers, very young, some of them are early 20s, some are even young back then, now so they've grown uh, my the masjid that I once upon a time was the imam of masjid Dar al salam they come there they finish the Quran they read the Quran from beginning to end they read it I think they come Friday nights or Saturday nights and they do that whenever I hear them or they inform me or I'm told about it it reminds me of the ayah وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَوْ لَا نُزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ الْقُرْآنُ جُمْلَةً وَاحِدَةً كذلك لنثبت به فؤادك ورتلناه ترتيلا تلاوة القرآن is من أسباب الثبات reciting the Quran is one of the ways to keep yourself steadfast it's one of the ways that helps you in the environment and the area that you're in because they're living in a land which is not a Muslim country right they live in the UK so they have to go to college they have to go to uni they have to go work so they intermingle with people who are not Muslims. Okay? They intermingle with people who are not Muslims. If they don't do that Quran program, they lose themselves. This tide, this wave will take them. And that's what Allah is saying. كَذَلِكَ لِنُثَبِّتَ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ وَرَتَّلْنَاهُ تَرْتِيلًا Allah is telling the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we said that in the Quran in 23 years, to keep you steadfast. Ibn Kathir, look what he said. He said, Unzila munajjaman fi thalathin wa ishirina sana bihasab al waqa'i wal hawadith wa ma yuhtaju ilayhi min al ahkam li tathbiti kulub al mu'minina bihi. Intaha kalamuhu rahimahullah. The Quran was sent down munajjaman, yani gradually, in 23 years, bihasab al waqa'i wal hawadith in accordance to the events and the situations that were happening at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa وَمَا يُحْتَاجُ إِلَيْهِ مِنَ الْأَحْكَامِ And the rulings that the Sahabas needed and the companions and the Prophet ﷺ لِتَثْبِيتِ قُلُوبِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ بِهِ To give the Muslim, the believers at that time, they make their hearts firm and steadfast. So the Qur'an, my brothers and sisters, is one of the ways to keep you steadfast. You steadfast. وَلِذَلِكَ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ It was one of the stories that one of the shuyukhs mentioned. He said that he's, he used to finish the Qur'an every seven days. He traveled Okay, he was studying, and uh, he's, so he's a Somali sheikh. So his father said to him, how many times do you finish the Qur'an? How often do you finish the Qur'an? And he said, I finish the Qur'an every seven days. And he said, my son, you've abandoned the Qur'an. You've abandoned the Qur'an? Seven days? Abandoned the Qur'an, yes. That's how he sees it. My brothers and sisters, 
Al-Quran hujjatul li ahlihi yawm al-qiyamah. The Quran is a proof for its people the day of judgment. It is shafi'un wa mushaffa'un inda rabbil alameen. That's why the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam he said in a hadith, iqra'u al-Quran, read this Quran. فَإِنَّهُ يَأْتِي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ شَفِيعًا لِأَصْحَابِهِ This Qur'an will intercede for you the day of judgment. The Qur'an will intercede for you the day of judgment. Are we all together, brothers? Brothers and sisters, we need to memorize the Qur'an. The person who reads the Qur'an is of what level? The one who memorizes the Qur'an is مَعَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ الْكِرَامِ you're with the angels. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "مثل الذي يقرأ القرآن وهو حافظ له مع السفرة الكرام البررة، ومثل الذي يقرأ وهو يتعاهده وهو عليه شاق، أما وهو عليه شديد." Another word he says, "فله أجران." It's a two word. The one who recites the Quran, he is حافظ. He is with the angels. مع السفرة الكرام البررة. ومثل الذي يقرأ القرآن and the one who recites the Quran وهو يتعاهده he's struggling وهو عليه شديد it's very hard on him فلو أجراني he has two rewards look at the level of the one who who's the one who is with the angels it is وهو حافظ له he's memorized it ولذلك the scholars would advise a person to memorize the Quran today we have Du'at Who would tell people Don't memorize the Quran Why memorize the Quran Don't You have the Mus'haf Can you read from the Mus'haf Khalas, That's enough But when we look at the kalam of the ulama That's what they advise the people حفظ كتاب الله العظيم Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah Look what he said He said لينظر ما يحفظ من العلم Let the person look at what they memorize In terms of not from knowledge فإن العمر Aziz Time is very little. You're not going to live for too long. أعمار أمتي ما بين ستين وسبعين وقليل من يجوز ذلك. Life span is very short. والعلم غزير. The knowledge is an ocean. What can I memorize? What, mem- mem- what should I memorize this and this and that? I can't memorize everything. So look at what you memorize in terms of knowledge. وإن أقوام يصرفون الزمان إلى حفظ ما غيره أولى منه. And a group of people, on the other hand. They are directing their time and their effort in memorizing something which they shouldn't really put it, they shouldn't be putting this thing first. Even though if it's a nice knowledge, but it's, it, you're diverting your effort and your time in this thing when there are more befitting things to memorize. وَإِن كَانَ كُلُّ الْعُلُومِ حَسَنًا Yes, oh, knowledge is good. You are memorizing عقيدة الواسطية أو كتاب التوحيد أو ثلاثة الأصول أو you're memorizing الفية بن مالك and جرومي and all these books yes they're all good that's nice knowledge وإن كان كل العلوم حسنا ولكن الأولى تقديم الأهم والأفضل والله the first thing you should give your time to my brother is the Quran وأفضل ما تشغل به حفظ القرآن the best thing that a person can preoccupy them, them, their time and their effort and their work is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said this in his great book, Sayyidul Khatir, Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah. That book is so much benefits in it. وَلِذَلِكَ the Salaf, they will strive that to make their children memorize the Qur'an. Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah, he said, كَانَ السَّلَفُ إِذَا نَشَأَ لِأَحَدِهِمْ وَلَدْ That if one of them had a child and his child grew, شَغَلُوهُ بِحِفْظِ الْقُرْآنِ وَسَمَاعِ الْحَدِيثِ they would preoccupy that child with what? شَغَلُوهُ بِحِفْظِ الْقُرْآنِ وَسَمَاعِ الْحَدِيثِ They would preoccupy him with memorizing the Qur'an and listening to hadith. فَيَثْبُتَ الْإِيمَانُ فِي قَلْبِهِ The iman would then be firm in his heart. Some people they say, I'm old. I'm at that old age. I'm an old man now. I'm an old woman. It's easy for you to say memorize the Qur'an because you've done it when you were young. I can't. Just because you're old at age, in age, that shouldn't stop you from memorizing the Quran. Because the revelation was complete. Okay? And Umar and Abi Bakr as Siddiq, they were what? They were senior in age. They were not young. 
and they memorized the entirety of the Quran. Keeping in mind, the Quran was coming down until the Prophet passed away. So they just, they had to memorize, kept going on memorizing. You just have, you got this to just memorize. What did they have? They had to memorize it as it was coming down. And when they were memorizing as it was coming down, they're growing older. So it becomes hard for them. ولذلك الإمام النووي look what he said. رحمه الله. He says, وهو من كبار الصحابة الذين حفظوا القرآن كله. عمر and Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. يعني Abu Bakr al-Siddiq was mentioned he memorized the Quran at the age of 61. And the Nawi saying here, وهو من كبار الصحابة الذين حفظوا القرآن كله. He's the oldest person to memorize the Quran, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. Abu Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Hamuya he memorized the Quran and he reached the age of 80. Ay naam. Wa kana qad balagha thamaneen. So what's your excuse? And anyone who doesn't memorize the Quran, my brothers and sisters, is like an empty house. Inside here is empty. You can tell me I memorized all these books. I haven't memorized anything. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنَّ الَّذِي لَيْسَ فِي جَوْفِهِ شَيْءٌ مِّنَ الْقُرْآنِ كَالْبَيْتِ الْخَرِبِ رَاهُ تِرْمِلِي if you don't have the Quran of Allah in your heart, you have no Quran in your heart, empty, khalas, nothing is in there. You're like an empty house, a destroyed warehouse. That's what your that's what your heart is. So prioritize. What are you memorizing? What should you be memorizing? Also, brothers and sisters, this Quran, because it's Mali'un bil Mawa'idi wa Zawajiri wa Takalif, it has to have effect on your heart. Because it has reminders. Because the Quran is warning us of things, because of the Quran is commanding us things, it has to have an effect on us. It's not right that you read the entire Quran and it doesn't affect you. Something's wrong with your heart now. Because if this Quran was to come down on a mountain, it would affect the mountain, as Allah told us. And I mean, this mountain is harder than your heart. How is it that the mountain gets affected by it and your heart doesn't get affected by it? Is your heart harder than the mountain? Uh, is that how hard your heart is? Then you need to go to, uh, you, need, you need to fix your heart. You need to go to a sheikh, a alim, and speak to him and say, look, sheikh, help me. Something's not right. I'm suffering. I'm sick. Do we actually do that, brothers and sisters, when we realize that qaswatul qalb? Do we go to the ulama and the people of knowledge and say, look, we, Shaykh, you need to advise me? Maymun ibn Mehran, when he felt that there was a bit of, and his heart was not up to standard, who did he go to? He went to Hassan al-Basri. When he went to Hassan al-Basri, they say Maymun ibn Mehran, kana katiba al-Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. He was a writer for Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Hey, he writer, he used to write for him. Wa kana Umar ibn Abdul Aziz la yuqarribu ila al-fadil. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, the only person who could be in his presence was a person who was uh, righteous. Maymun ibn Mehran found that his heart, somehow it was affected. What did he do? He said to his son, my son, take me to Hassan al-Basri. I need to talk to him. I need to have a conversation with him. I need to do something about this. So his son took him by the hand. Maymun, at that time from the story, it seems like he lost his eyesight. So he came to the house of Hassan al-Basri. When he came to the house, house of Hassan al-Basri, Ibn Sa'ad mentions this story, by the way, in his tabaqat. They knocked the door. The slave or the servant of Hassan al-Basri opened the door and she said, Who is the, who's at the door, she said. And they said to her, that is uh, Maymur ibn Mehran and his son. She said to him, Ya Shaykh al-Su, ma abqaka fi hadha al-zaman al-Su. Oh, you evil Shaykh, why are you alive at this evil time? He started to cry. Hassan al-Basri came out with the crying and the tears of Maymun ibn Mehran. Look at him. He's crying and he said, my heart is still hard. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Aimatul huda wa masabihul duja. He comes into the house. He says to him, Maymun ibn Mehran says to Hassan al-Basri, inni ajidu fi qalbi ghilda. I found my heart is hard. So give me some words. Maymun ibn Mehran is waiting for Hassan al-Basri to give him that reminder. Hassan knows the Quran has the best effect. 
He knows. لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل إلا رأيته لا رأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون. This Quran, if it sent on a mountain, it affects him. So what did he do? He looked at the Maymun ibn Mihran and he said to him, أَفَرَأَيْتَ إِمَّا تَعْنَاهُمْ سِنِينَ ثُمَّ جَاءَهُمْ مَا كَادُوا ثُمَّ جَاءَهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يُوْعَدُونَ مَا أَغْنَى عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يُمَتَّعُونَ He read those verses on him. What does the verse say? The verse says, أَفَرَأَيْتَ إِمَّا تَعْنَاهُمْ سِنِينَ Allah says, if we give them a time, a time, a period of time for them to enjoy themselves, ثم جاءهم and then it comes to them ثم جاءهم ما كانوا يعدون that which was promised to them comes to them ما كانوا عن ما ثم جاءوا ما كانوا يعدون ما أغنى عنه ما كانوا يمتعون what they were enjoying and they were distracted with will not help them when those verses were read ميمون ابن مهران's heart shaked he cried and he wept and he even became unconscious this concept of crying when reciting the Quran and having خشيه this is Amal al-Sahaba. This is the Prophet alayhi salatu salam. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud read on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam surah al-Nisa. When he reached the ayah, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَأُولَاءِ الشَّهِيدَ When he reached that verse, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, he said to him, حَسْبُكَ حَسْبُكَ الْآنِ Stop now. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said, فَالْتَفَتُّ إِلَيْهِ I looked at the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, looked at the Prophet. فَإِذَا عَيْنَاهُ تَذْرِفَاتِ The Prophet's two eyes were just watering. Tears were coming out of his eyes. مُتَّفَقُدْ عَلَيْهِ Bukhari and Muslim both narrated it. Abdullah ibn al-Shakhir رضي الله عنه he said أَتَيْتُ إِلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ وَهُوَ يُصَلِّ I came to the Prophet and he was praying. وَلِجَوْفِ أَزِيزٌ كَأَزِيزِ الْمِرْجَلِ I came to him. وَلِجَوْفِ Inside the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was أَزِيزٌ كَأَزِيزِ الْمِرْجَلِ يعني صوت كصوت القدر إذا غلا the pot when it when you fire make a يعني um, it makes that noise the prophet's chest was making that noise because of the crying Ibn Athir mentions that uh, meaning of يعني أزيز كأزيز المرجلي in his كتاب النهاية النهاية في غريب الحديث and even the كتاب الفيومي in his كتاب المسرح المنير صاحب كتاب مرقات المفاتيح also mentions it يعني من البكاء because of his crying and Imam Nasa'i narrated this uh, and he even chapter in his uh, Sunan, Kitab al-Sahwi, Bab al-Buka'i fi salah The chapter of crying. Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha. What did she say? Kana Abu Bakr rajulan bakka'an. La yamliku aynayhi idha qara'a al-Qur'ana. Abu Bakr was what? Rajulan bakka'an la yamliku aynayhi. He cried a lot. Bakka is excessive crier. لا يملك عينيه he can't control his eyes إذا قرأ القرآن when he recites the Quran عبيد بن عمير رحمه الله he said صلى بنا عمر بن الخطاب عمر he led us in the prayer صلاة الفجر فافتتح سورة يوسف he opened سورة يوسف فقرأها and he recited it حتى إذا بلغ when he reached وضيضت عيناه من الحزن فهو كظيم بكى حتى انقطع فركع. He cried and cried and cried and cried for so long that his voice cut. يعني انقطع صوته. His voice went. خلاص. He couldn't speak anything. So he did ركوع. ابن أبي مليك said صحبت ابن عباس من المدينة إلى مكة. ابن ابن أبي مليك he said I befriended I, I was in the companionship of ابن عباس from مدينة مكة. وَكَانَ يُصَلِّي رَكْعَتَيْنِ And he was praying to Rak'a ibn Abbas. فَإِذَا نَزَلَ قَامَ شَطْرَ الْلَيْلِ If he came, he would stand up half of the night. وَيُرَتِّلُ الْقُرْآنِ And he would recite Quran. يَقْرَأُ حَرْفًا حَرْفًا Word for word he would read it. وَيُكْثُرُ فِي ذَلِكَ مِنَ النَّشِيجِ وَالنَّحِيبِ What would he increase in that? He would, يعني نشيد, it means a صوت التي, الذي يتردد في Al-Halqi, the noise that keeps coming back in the throat. Uh, and Nahimna means Al-Buka, 
يعني بصوت طويل ومد يعني لونج فويس ذاتس وات صاحب كتاب النهاية في غريب الحديث منشنز عبد الله بن عروة بن الزبير عروة بن الزبير صار عبد الله هي سيد قلت لجدتي أسماء بنت أبي بكر عبد الله بن عروة بن الزبير سيد to his grand, grand uh, mother أسماء بنت أبي بكر كيف كان أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يفعلون إذا قرئ عليهم القرآن What would the Sahabas do if the Quran was read on them قالت she said كانوا كما نعتهم الله They were as Allah described them in the Quran تدمع أعينهم وتقشعر جلودهم Their eyes would water and their bodies would يعني شفا They would tremble And Imam Al-Baghawi mentions this in his tafsir. ولذلك جعفر الطيار رضي الله تعالى عنه he recited يعني جعفر بن أبي طالب he recited on who أن جاشي يعني سورة مريم right? When he recited on him فبكى حتى أخضل لحيتيه أما فبكى he cried حتى أخضل لحيته he cried until his tears, his bed became filled with his tears. وَبَكَى أَسَاقِفَتُهُ يعني جعفر cried, Najashi also cried. And when Najashi cried, the tears filled his bed. And Imam Ahmad narrated this in his Musnad. This is amal salaf This is the action of righteous people. Abu Salih al-Samman, it was mentioned, rahimahullah, لما قدم أهل اليمن زمان أبي بكر وسبعوا القرآن جعلوا يبكون When the people of Yemen came, the time of Abu Bakr, and they heard the Quran, and they started to cry, Abu Bakr, what did he say? He said, هكذا كنا ثم قست, ثم قست القلوب This is how we used to be in our hearts, then after that became hard. We used to be like that. Abu Nu'ayn mentions in his kitab Hilatul Awliya wa Tabaqatu Al-Asfiyya So what I want from this is Brothers and sisters Is that some people they think it's, I'm a tough guy Why would I cry? Why would I cry for the Quran or in the, When you're reading the Quran it's a, it's a sign of Iman Allah praise the people of the Quran who, يعني, The people who believe in Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala And they believe in Him Subhanahu wa Ta'ala And when the Quran is recited وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلِهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ It's a good sign. The people of the Qur'an, my brothers and sisters, are the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ لِلَّهِ تَعَالَ أَهْلِينَ مِنَ النَّاسِ The Sahaba, they said, مَنْ هُمْ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ The Prophet, he said, أَهْلُ الْقُرْآنِ هُمْ أَهْلُ اللَّهِ وَكَانَ الرَّجُلُ إِذَا قَرَأَ الْبَقَرَةَ وَآلِ عِمْرَانَ يُعَدُّ فِينَا عَظِيمًا Ahmad narrated this in his Musnad. Anas ibn Malik, and he said, if somebody memorized Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Al-Ali Imran, of course he memorized the wording and also the meaning. يُعَدُّ فِينَا عَظِيمًا That person would be considered amongst us somebody great. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Asin رضي الله تعالى عنهما, he said, مَنْ جَمَعَ الْقُرْآنَ فَقَدْ حُمِّلَ أَمْرًا عَظِيمًا Anyone who has combined the Qur'an, gathered the Qur'an, has memorized the Qur'an, and this person has been burdened with a great matter. وَقَدْ اسْتُدْرِجَتِ النُّبُوَّةُ بَيْنَ جَنْبَيْهِ إِلَّا أَنَّهُ لَا يُوحَى إِلَيْهِ And what has been placed in your chest is revelation. Not, and, but revela- You've got prophecy, the Prophet's pr- entire prophecy, and what he came with, alayhi salatu wasalam, is to convey this book and explain the meaning in it. In your chest is that. Except that revelation will come down on you. وَلَا يَنْبَغِي لِصَاحِبِ الْقُرْآنِ أَنْ يَحِدَّ فِي مَنْ يَحِدَّ It is not befitting for the person on the Qur'an, okay, who's memorized the Qur'an, who holds the Qur'an, who understands the Qur'an, أَنْ يَحِدَّ فِي مَنْ يَحِدَّ يعني لا ينبغي لصاحب القرآن أن تعتريه شدة الطيش والغضب كما تعتري غيره. You shouldn't be light in getting angry and reacting to people. Because you're a Sahib al-Quran. And 
وفي جوفه كلام كلام الله عز وجل ان يو تشست از ذا بوك اوف الله سبحانه وتعالى الماهر بالقران مع سفره الكرام البرره اولويز ريمبر ذات الله ميد ا بروميس ذات ذا بيبل هو ميمورايز ذا قران they are going to be with the angels Bukhari and Muslim both narrated that this is what I want brothers and sisters to understand this is what I want my brothers and sisters to internalize so Qadhi Iyad Al-Yahsubi he explains the hadith يعني الماهر الماهر بالقرآن مع سفرة الكرام البررة he says يعني يحتمل الله أعلم أن له في الآخرة منازل يكون فيها رفيقا للملائكة السفرة لاتصافه بوصفهم بحمل كتاب الله ويحتمل أن يكون المراد he says أنه عامل بعمل سفرة وسالك مسلكهم. He said can take one of those possible meanings. One is that he's actually going to be with them the day of judgment because he has a description and a quality that they had which is holding the Quran, right? And he said it could also be mean that he is يعني أنه عامل بعمل سفرة. That he is doing the action of these angels uh, يعني he's treading on their path. And I mentioned to you before brothers and sisters that the people who have knowledge of the Quran and memorize the Quran and understand the Quran, they should be the people you consult and you go back to and you ask questions to. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu ma he mentioned, كان القراء أصحاب مجالس عمره ومشاورته كهولا كانوا أو شبانا. The person who memorized the Quran is, 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 is honored in this world and even after he dies. In this world he's raised يا أم القوم أقرأهم لكتاب الله. That he is the one who leads the people in the prayer In the greatest action And I mentioned that before And after death The Prophet ﷺ He used to combine in the grave When يعني شهداء أحد Okay بين الرجلين Two men He would combine them And he would ask the question So he can put them together He would say أيهم أكثر أخذا للقرآن Which of them uh, has taken more Quran. Which of, them, which of them has memorized more Quran? فإذا أشير له إلى أحدهما قدمه في اللحد. If he was told this one, he would put him first in the lahad. And he raise him. Yeah. He will put him forward. The person who memorized the Quran is في أعلى درجات النعيم. As the Prophet told us, يقال لصاحب القرآن اقرأ وارتقي. ورتل كما كنت ترتل في الدنيا فإن منزلتك عند آخر آية تقرأها So read, recite, rise while you're reading and you are going to be in the last place where your memorization takes you and Imam Tirmidhi narrated this in his jam you're going to come the day of judgment you're going to lose that opportunity why? because you did not in any way shape or form memorize any Quran so as soon as you read Fatiha or Surah Al-Nas and Falak and um, Surah Al-Ikhlas and all of that, you're going to stop because you haven't got more Quran. Now I want to give some advice in terms of memorization. Some people, they want to memorize the Quran, but they do certain mistakes and they, they do errors and this and that. So I want to give you qawaid and dawabit in memorizing the Quran. As you all know, we were doing the recitation of the Quran for the entirety of the month of Ramadan. Okay? And we just stuck to one mushaf. We didn't change the mushaf that we were reading from. A person should not change their mushaf. Al-hifdu yakunu min mushafin muwahidin fi al So that it helps you ala rusukh al-hifd. Wa sur'atul al-istidhkar. So you can remember the muwatil al-ayat. You can, you know where the verse starts from. Okay, you know where the ayah finishes. If you ask the hafiz an ayah, he knew, he tells you the page it's within. He's memorized it from a particular mushaf. Also, from the things that help in your memorization, which is number two, يجب أن يكون حفظك على شيخ لتصحيح التلاوة. You have to read on a teacher, so you can correct your recitation. You don't memorize it with bad, يعني um, تلاوة. Number three, what helps is لِيَكُونَ حِفْظُكَ يَوْمِيًا Let it be daily. If you disconnect from that flow, it weakens your aspiration and your, your drive and your memorization. فَالْإِنْقِطَاعُ يُضَعِفُ الْهِمَّةَ وَالْحِفْظِ The fourth point, inshallah ta'ala, is الْأَصْلُ فِي الْحِفْظِ هُوَ التَّكْرَارِ 
repetition is the asal. The more you repeat, the more you revise, the more you go over it, the more your memorization becomes sharper. كلما زاد التكرار صار الحفظ أتقن. Ask yourself a question. Why is Fatiha easy to you than any other surah in the Quran? Because of takrar. There's no evidence to show that Fatiha is easier than any other surah in the Quran. But why is it that it's more easier for you? Why is it that you know Fatiha fast? It's because you repeat it at least 17 times a day, sah? Number five, your memorization should start from Surah Al Nas. That's the correct way. Don't start from Baqarah and go down. Or don't start from the middle. Or don't just pick random chapters. Start from Surah Al Nas and go up to Surah Al Baqarah. Why? Aysar. Aysar. It's easy that way. That you quickly finish one Surah quickly. MashaAllah, you get in the routine of moving Surah to Surah. This, as a beginner, it shows you, MashaAllah, I've memorized this much Surah. And just Amah has. The juice that has the most surah in it, right? So you go fast. Um, number six. إذا ضاق عليك وقت الحفظ والمراجعة فقدم المراجعة على الحفظ. If there's a time you don't have enough time, it's too tight today, you can't take it. Which one should you give precedence to? Memorizing something new or revising what you already knew? Revise. You can only do one. If it happens every day, you need to do muraja. If you don't have enough time, go for the muraja'a over the hifd. That's to, I'm talking to the people who are now memorizing the Quran. Number seven. لا تنتقل إلى حفظ صفحة جديدة إلا بعد إتقان ما قبلها. Do not move from one page to another page if you haven't mastered the page that you are currently in. If you've not mastered this page, don't move on to the next. Make sure that is you've pushed that to your long-term memory, inshaAllah ta'ala. Another thing, inshaAllah ta'ala, which is, كُلُّ مَنْ حَفِظَ الْقُرْآنَ يَتَفَلَّتُ مِنْهُ الْمَحْفُوظُ فِي سَنَتَيْنِ الْأُولَيَيْنِ And this is a marhala known as marhala to tajmi'ah. So don't become saddened. When you memorize the Qur'an first, and you take of, in the book of Allah, the first two years, you lose it quickly. It's called marhala to tajmi'ah. Don't be sad that you're losing something or that you're doing a lot of mistakes. It's it's marhala marhala sa'ba lilibtila. It's a lot of test. Shaytan at this particular time would work against you to weaken you, to make you feel incompetent and, and, and make you feel like you're not going to be able to do it. So, fada'a anka wasawisahu. Leave off his whispers. وَاسْتَمِرْ فِي حِفْظِ الْقُرْآنِ فَهُوَ كَنْزٌ لَا يُعْطَى لِأَيِّ أَحَدٍ Stick to it. Be up consistent in memorizing and do not give in to the whispers of shaitan. If you feel like you're losing aspiration, look at the, um, the virtues that I've mentioned that the scholars have stated. And look at the hadith and ayat and speak to someone who's memorized the Qur'an to encourage you. Don't give up. How much should a person memorize daily? How much amount? مقدار الحفظ اليومي I would say احفظ كل يوم وجها واحدا So every day memorize one page. وإذا كان حفظك متقنا If your memorization is very good فلك أن تزيد على وجه Then add to another side. أما إذا أكثرت من الحفظ من غير إتقان But if you take in more without really solidifying it فإن المحفوظ يكون ضعيفا Later when you do muraja'ah, you're going to realize that. If you do a page so quickly and you give it in and it's not really mutqan, mutqin, later when we, you go back to do your revision, you're going to realize this page, why is it that I don't know it at all? But if you memorize it proper and sharpen it at the beginning, when you come back to it later, very easy. If one page is even hard for you, do half a page. Remember, the most important thing is the muraja'ah, not the jadid. وَلِذَلِكَ I even say to يعني, people who memorize the Qur'an, this is my belief, don't take more than a page. Even if your child has the best memorization, don't do it. Take your time. As the, uh, some of the scholars, they say, خُذْ حَرْفًا وَقُلْ أَلْفًا 
Take one word and say it a thousand times. Take that one page, go over it again, 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 again. It is better that you do one page and you're mutqin in it, then you take five pages and you're like this. Number two, when it comes to the amount that you should be memorizing daily, لا تزيد في اليوم الواحد على حفظ أكثر من صفحتين. Don't go over two pages. How, now you say, والله me too mutqin. It does. If if it's too mutqin, okay, don't go more than two pages. Because if you go by two pages, يعني this this side this side and this side, you do two pages, the the muraja is going to be a lot, and then you're going to fall under. فمن حفظ السريع النسي سريعا. You memorized it quickly, you forget it quickly. You just you don't want that trouble. So ideally, I would say one page, but some people, mashallah, Allah mubarak, Allah has given them that ability to. Um, Allah has given them the ability to memorize. How and what method should you take in order to memorize the Quran? And I'm going to mention to you a method and a way which you can quickly memorize and you be strong in your memorization and you be solid, inshallah. And I'm going to apply that on Surah Al Jumu'ah. Memorize or read. The first page completely Qara'atan Sahihatan With a teacher You properly Okay You've MashaAllah Read it correctly Every single letter Every single makhraj is correct So Makharaj al-huruf is good And your sifat al-huruf is good And the sifat al-huruf Whether it's sifat lazim Or sifat arid It doesn't matter It's all sharp MashaAllah Then Divide that page in terms of memorization into two. Okay? Pay attention here. So the first, what did I say the first thing you do? The first thing is recite it completely. The first page. Qira'atan sahiha. With a teacher. And you, mashallah, solid in it. So you read the whole page. Mastered it. Then now, divide this page that you just memorized into what? In terms of memorization, divide it into two. Qismul awal, what do you do? Okay, you divide it, the page into what? In terms of memorization, divide it into two. And nisful awal min al which? And then qismu thani. First half and second half. And the reason and the secret behind this is read the first uh, ayah 20 times. So for example, you say يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ الْمَلِكِ الْقُدُّوسِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ 20 times. Then you read the next ayah 20 times. هُوَ الَّذِي بَعْثَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُّبِينٍ You read that again 20 times. Then what you do is read the first verse with the second verse 20 times. So now you know it 20, 20 times separately, the first verse, and then the second verse. Um, read this, you read the second verse uh, 20 times. Now you're reading them together 20 times. Why? Because now you want to connect them. You want to learn how to connect these two verses. After that, read the third verse. وَآخَرِينَ مِنْهُمْ لَمَّا يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ And recite it 20 times. Then what you do is, Read the second verse with the third verse 20 times. So you can connect between them. And then read the fourth verse 20 times. Read it 20 times. Okay? Then what you do is read the third verse with the fourth verse 20 times. So you can connect them. Read it. These verses, all four of the four, f- first v- verses, that's half the page now. All of those four, read it together 20 times now. 
go over it 20 times. Now what you do is you go to the second half of the page and you start from the fifth verse. مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ حُمِّلُوا التَّوْرَاةَ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَحْمِلُوهَا كَمَثَلِ الْحِمَارِ يَحْمِلُوا أَسْفَارًا بِئْسَ مَثَلُ الْقَوْمِ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ You recite it 20 times. And then you connect the fifth verse with the fourth verse. You read it 20 times. Then you read the sixth verse 20 times. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ هَادُوا إِن قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ هَادُوا إِن زَعَمْتُمْ أَنَّكُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ لِلَّهِ مِنْ دُونِ النَّاسِ مِنْ دُونِ النَّاسِ فَتَمَنَّوُوا الْمَوْتَ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ And then what do you do? You connect the fifth verse with the sixth verse 20 times. Again, you just want the connection here. Then you go to the seventh verse and you recite it 20 times. وَلَا يَتَمَنَّوْنَهُ أَبَدًا بِمَا قَدَّمَتْ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِالظَّالِمِينَ And you connect the sixth verse with the seventh verse 20 times. Then you go for the eighth verse and you recite it 20 times. قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ And then what do you do? You recite the seventh verse, seventh, seventh verse with the eighth verse 20 times. And then you recite the fifth verse to the eighth verse, because that's the page, right? Okay, and you recite it 20 times to connect them. Then what you do is you recite the first page completely 20 times, all of it, to master it. My children, I don't use this 20. I actually go more. If I feel like the verse, it, they're not good at it, 20, 25, 30. And then I realized the best thing to do is to make it 20, uh, 50. The best thing to do is to make it 50. So you, I've made my children memorize up to 50 now. And then we made that the standard of 50. Some people might want to do it more. I heard the scholars of Mauritania, they go up to 500. Okay? And they memorize it like that. Now the question is, how do I revise? And I do muraja'a of al-hifd al-jadid. How do I revise what I, the new thing I memorized? The, the new... How do I revise my new surah that I learnt? Or my dars al-jadid? Or the just page I took. How do I revise that? Number one. راجع ما حفظته في الأيام الخمسة السابقة حفظا إلى موضع الدرس الجديد. My 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 طريقة and I my method I like to take is that I make sure that the day before I come to the class for the teacher that I read the new page so I get it, mashallah, and uh, ready that same day when I leave him. And the next day, what I do is I always connect the surah together. So I don't always read a new page. I always read the page before it. Sorry, from the beginning. So if the first page of the surah, surah al-Jumu'ah, for example, you read the first page, okay, and you connect it to the small portion. I always start from the beginning. And I don't start from that page. It's always connected to the previous lesson. That's the way I see it. Um, rather than just reading every day just one page. That method is best when it comes to keeping what you memorized before. It's always going to be stuck in your heart and your mind, so you're never going to forget. That's the, what I what I see. Um, once you've finished the Quran and you've memorized the Quran, remember revision is the asal now. Muraja'a is what's needed. Al hifdu la yarsuhu illa bil muraja'a. Your hifdu will never be solid unless you do muraja'a. ولذلك ابن الجز ابن الجوزي he says والدوام أصل عظيم فكم من من ترك الاستذكار بعد التحفظ فضاع زمن طويل في استرجاع محفوظ قد نسي. One of the greatest harm for a person who memorized, who spent time memorizing a book and didn't revise it later is that it goes. It goes like you never memorized it in your life. Wasted your time in memorizing this thing and now it's gone. But the Quran, alhamdulillah, if you memorize it, you didn't waste your time. Like it's very serious. Some of the scholars did say, and it's not the strongest opinion, but they did say, you may fall under the ayah, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكًا وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى قَالَ رَبِّ لِمَ حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا 
قال كذلك أتتك آياتنا فنسيتها you forgot it so forget in the Quran they said it might fall under this verse even though that's not a strong opinion but you should be worried so الدوام is very important مراجعة إخواني is very important don't leave the Quran if you memorize the Quran all of it and you didn't do muraja'a after that when you go back to it you're going to feel like did I ever memorize the Quran so what do you do muraja'a and walidhalika every child that's memorized the Quran if he memorizes the Quran he has to combine between al-hifd wal muraja'a we my coach and my people alhamdulillah we have a, a long living practice which is uh, we do subah so subah every day the child is doing three, four just subah. So that keeps the mamuraja'ah. The child does that. And so every seven days, your child's going to finish the Quran. Every seven days, he is memorizing the Quran. Okay? And that's the way that the Sahabas used to do it. Al itqan is very important. Tariqa to itqan al-Qur'an is very important to learn a way that you can solidify. Um, and one of the things that by muraja'a you learn is al-mutashabihat, the verses that look like each other, that are similar to each other, that the hafiz sometimes gets confused with. How do you separate those uh, from each other? It all becomes clear with muraja'a and going over it. That's why the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, Istadhkiru al-Qur'ana Fala huwa ashaddu Taqassiyan Min suduri al-rijali Min al-na'ami bi'uquliha Bukhari Muslim both narrated Revise the Qur'an Because it goes faster than A camel uh, Goes away from its rope that's holding it Al-A'mash Sulaiman ibn Mehran al-A'mash He said Qara'atu Ala Yahya ibn Wathab I read on him 30 marra 30 times and the muraja goes, goes over again and again and again. Quran goes, it will leave you and it will, it, it will be like, did I ever, ever يعني, study this? Did I ever go through it? The scholars, they took the path which the sahabas made, which is the sahabas used to finish the Quran every single, every seven days. Outside Ramadan, they would finish it يعني, every seven days and they would do it in the, the word Femi Bishok. Femi Bishok. So the first day they would, يعني, Femi, the fat stands for uh, Fatiha until the ending of Surah An Nisa. And then Mim starts from Ma'ida, Ila Surah Tawbah, second day. The third day is Femi, the Ya is Yunus, Ila Nihayat Surah Al Nahal. Okay, until the ending of Surah Al Nahal. On the fourth day, Femi. B, the ba bishokin for ba bishok is the uh, fourth uh, day. They will start from bishokin Banu Israel, yani Surah to Isra is also known as Banu Israel, up to Surah Al Furqan. Okay? Yani to the ending of Surah Al Furqan. And then bishok, Sheen stands here for Shu'ara until the ending of Surah to uh, Yasin, which is the fifth day. And on the sixth day, bishok, the wow here is. يعني والصافات صفا until the ending of Surah Al-Hujurat and on the seventh day they will do the Hizb Al-Mufassal which starts from Qaf إلى نهاية سورة الناس the Sahaba that's how they would finish the Quran seven days okay Fati the first day is Fatiha to Nas the second day is what Ma'idah to Tawbah the third day is from Yunus to Nahal the ending of Surah Al-Nahal the fourth day is from Surah Al-Isra up to Surah Al-Furqan, the ending of Surah Al-Furqan. You finish all of Surah Al-Furqan. The fifth day, you start from Shu'ara until the ending of Surah Yasin. The sixth day, you start from Wasafat Safa until the ending of Surah Al-Hujurat. The seventh day, you start from Qaf until the ending of Surah Al-Nas. If you want to remember it, just say, Fami Bishok. My mouth needs this. It desires it. The Fat stands for Fatiha. The Mim stands for Ma'ida. The Ya stands for Yunus. The Ba stands for Banu Israel, yani Surah Isra. The Sheen stands for Shu'ara. And the Waw stands for Safat. And the Qaf stands for Surah Qaf. 
in those seven days you finish the memorization of the Quran. Every seven days you finish it, very good. Or what you could do is you can finish it in three days. How do you do that? You start from Surah Al Fatiha, you bring it to Alam wa Nama Ghanimtum, Surah Al Imran, Surah Al Anfal, sorry. From Surah Al Anfal, Fama Kana Jawaba Kaumi to Surah Al Naml, from Fama Kana Jawaba Kaumi to Surah Al Naml to Surah Al Nas. Every three days, that's your revision. 10, 10, 10. And we already, subhanAllah, showed you that to be very honest with you, every juice can be read in half an hour. Every juice can be read in half an hour. So if you're doing uh, 10 juice a day, let's say even an hour, it's only 10 hours. 10 hours a day. The rest is yours. Are we all together, brothers? I believe that you can actually do it 15 hours, you can finish the entire Quran. 15 hours, you can finish the entire Quran. And that would be the best muraja'ah to do every single day. You read it ala qira'ati hadar, and you finish the Quran like that. Yani hadar, you read it with a bit of paste, observing the tajweed and everything. Inshallah ta'ala, you will be able to finish the Quran in 15 hours every day if you wanted to. So brothers and sisters, I hope inshallah ta'ala that I did shed light on um, this topic, that I gave it justice, I spoke about it. Um, I really can't, to be honest, say that I gave this topic justice because there's much more things could, that could be said and should be said. And uh, But I hope I've given you guys enough to, inshallah ta'ala, think and ponder and contemplate and bi'idhnillah al kareem go towards the Qur'an. I, I hope, inshallah ta'ala, that I've achieved in this lecture and also in the uh, uh, recitation of the entire Quran to encourage you all to go towards the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I hope I've achieved that so Allah can add it to my scale of righteous deed and that he can forgive me for my sins and my shortcomings. Oh Allah, you are the one who has the ability to do that. I want to end it there, inshallah ta'ala. Anything I've said that was wrong or incorrect is for me and shaytan and Allah and his messenger are both free from it. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.